here in downtown Miami, you have the Brightline station, which is the high-speed rail station here. And as you come in, this is your Uber, our drop-off point right here, so your Uber cars can pick you up in this location. And then over to my right, there is bicycles provided. I mean, there, it's a paid service. So you come up to the kiosk and you swipe your card and you select your bike. But here is the Brightline station. And then this other section is for little scooters, little e-scooters right here and but they're all gone here is the pricing structure for the individual items with some advertising you have signage up here at the top to kind of give you an indication and then also through a partnership with uber you can reserve a uber transportation with Brightline that goes within five miles of your destination is free and then beyond that is at a reduced rate but they also have these little local golf carts that you can also reserve right here so it'll hold your luggage in the back and they'll drive within a three mile area of downtown there are certain stipulations of where they cannot travel to in the downtown area is what the individual told me but those are some good transportation options for you as a train passes overhead so again passenger drop off uber drop off uber pickup you have uh, shared shuttle buses you have the little golf cart a bright line service and then we're going to head into the station as those horns honk. So I'm here at the Brightline train station. We're actually going to go inside, but I'm going to have to mute the volume because they have copyright music playing overhead. Um, I'll try to add music so you don't get quite bored watching this. But I'm going to give you a full walkthrough of the inside of the Miami station. So just bear with me for the next couple of minutes so you can get a real good overview. When you first go in to the left is going to be the kiosk's computer screens that you can purchase tickets um, right there. But if you go forward and to the right is the customer service desk. So you can drop off your larger luggages, you can ask for assistance, or you can book tickets through them. And then we're going to walk around. I'll show you the baggage claim area. Uh, and then uh, walk around the whole escalator stack, go upstairs, show you the upstairs where the Miami sign is located. I cannot record through security, but security is so easy. You just scan your barcode, QR code through the gate. You lay your luggage and your handbag on the conveyor belt. You pick it up, go on the other side, and it's literally motorbikes. It's literally just like five seconds to walk right on through and then I'll give you an overview of the standard lounge area or the smart lounge and then the premier lounge area um, and even the bathrooms so come on with me
food provided table here in the Premier Lounge. It's actually a little high for wheelchair accessibility. If you're in a manual um, a titanium frame wheelchair because you're paraplegic, the height of this table is approximately 36 inches. So it's, it'd be hard for someone to reach to the middle of the table or some of these items. So again, if you're in a wheelchair, just take note that it's a little bit more difficult for you to maybe reach some items, so you might have to ask. If you're traveling alone, you'll have to ask for an attendant. If you're traveling with somebody, you know how that works. So again, that's my only recommendation to Brightline is this table needs to be a little bit lower for accessibility. So in the Premier Lounge, they do have wheelchair accessible desk units that you can wheel a chair right up underneath that and you still have access to the power ports that are located there. So to activate the power ports at the desk, you come and you just press the button and they will rotate up into position for you so you can see what they have. And then when you're done, they will retract back down into the space. So this is here at the desk area, just to the left as you enter the Premier Lounge. I'm here on the platform and we purchased the premiere ticket so we get car number one and if you look up based on your ticket you see the car numbers that corresponds to the car at that location so here we come car number one it is raining there's a marquee sign there so here's car number one watch your step the yellow bumps indicate for low vision people that there's a transition change and that's wet and we're going to come in right here these are automatic doors car number one and we're going to find our seat 14. So we're headed to Fort Lauderdale. You see it's virtually empty. They have dual seating, they have quad seating with tables. And we're gonna come up to here. You have small, small, you have large. You have seat adjustment seat bales. They also have window shades that you can pull down and then lighting up at the top. And we're 
we're currently leaving the station. Again, just like the other train, there's your bathroom facility right there. There's your lock button. There's a, a foot lock button down there as well. It's very accessible. So you're going to press this button here. That'll close the door when you're finished. But the button there is what you're going to press. You have seating area here. When you first enter your car, go ahead and drop off your luggage right here unless you've stored larger luggage with Brightline. And then here you have your accessible seating area for wheelchairs. Um, there's power plugs. There's call buttons, lighting. And then we're in seat 14C, which should be right here. There is also luggage space at the top with marquee signs. So I'm leaving the Premier car, Premier lounge car, and we're going to go into the Smart class cars. So we're walking between trains right here. So this is car number two. Again, there's bathrooms and the sitting area. I'm going to be really quiet. Luggage storage. So these are two by two seating through here. If you can see that. I'm just going to walk to the end of the car. And this is more crowded back this way. And then the, there you go. So you do have luggage storage at both ends of the car. So this is actually a wet towel inside this that they give you upon arrival. So don't eat it. Looks like a Butterfingers, but it is a wet towel. You also have baggage storage here safety card right there and then down there at the bottom is your power outlet right there you do have dual armrests if you can see that dual armrests over there and then the button there will adjust the back of the seat there's handles there so when you're walking in the cars in motion you can hold on to so here in the premier lounge car they also have an attendant that they'll bring you a breakfast if it's before noon if afternoon it they'll bring you a charcuterie board a beverage of your choice again you get a wet washcloth and then um, I pre-arrange transportation through Brightline for Uber service to take me to the airport. So they have already called me and indicated that the Uber will be waiting outside the station upon arrival. So, yeah, so far so good. So I get Brightline 9 out of 10 marks because they've done really good. If you don't have an obvious mobility issue, like in a wheelchair or using a white cane with a red tip, they're slow to respond if you tell them you need assistance because you have mobility issues or low vision issues. The signage in the station could be larger. The signage above the seats could actually be larger for people with low vision um, to help people with low vision navigate a little bit easier without asking for assistance. But to locate the Premier Lounge from the Smart Lounge, the signage is very high up on the wall and it's in small print. The contrast is not that great, so I give Brightline a negative on that. Uh, it would be nice to have an attendant waiting outside the Brightline station to help people with low vision locate their, their Uber service if they premier, if they book the Premier service and Uber is provided. And then in the Premier Lounge area, the, the buffet table was about 36 to 37 inches too high. So people in wheelchairs, especially um, paraplegics in lightweight wheelchairs, they sit a little lower. They would not be able to access everything on those tables. So a comment to Brightline was, hey, bring the table down a little lower or have it more accessible for people in the wheelchairs. We've arrived in Fort Lauderdale. So just grab your luggage and get close to the exit door. There are hand grips to hold on to. This is just to help you facilitate getting on and off the train. 
and you can see the platform is going to be over on my right hand side. There are already passengers waiting to board the train. We get up. So watch your step exiting the train. So it doesn't matter here at Fort Lauderdale, you can go left or you can go right because uh, there's a set of escalators at both ends that are going to bring you down to the platform area. So actually going up. So I, I ordered my, my Uber ride. I asked for attendants to help me locate it. And again, Brightline, your customer service for people with accessibility needs, you need to ramp that up because uh, if this is the right pickup spot, I'm going to have to see. Uh, and being low vision, it's going to be difficult. So it happened again, the Uber canceled at the station for pickup. And so I went inside. If you have Premier service, they'll rebook you another Uber. Um, that way you don't have to pay for it because with the Premier service, that is a complimentary service within five miles of the train station. The other option is you can take these shuttle buses that will take you to the airport but that's a that's a paid service and then they have these small little golf cart things that will take you around as well so here at the station in fort lauderdale that's the end of the trip so hope y'all enjoyed it and hopefully you learned some information